Well, good evening, and thank you for joining us for our Pray at Home series here on Wednesday nights. Uh, last week, we wrapped up our series on the Beatitudes, and this week we're going to be diving into a new series on the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, before we dive in, uh, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are grateful that um, you do come into our lives. You give us your spirit that comes alongside of us and uh, makes us fruitful. So God, I pray that as we come into this series on looking at uh, the fruit of the spirit and what that means for us and for our lives, pray that we would just be open uh, to what you uh, would like to do um, and how you would like us uh, to be fruitful um, through our obedience to you. Uh, so Lord, be with us and thank you for um, calling us to commune with you. In your name, amen. So the fruit of the Spirit um, is exactly what it sounds like. It's the fruit of the Spirit. It's not fruit that we produce ourselves. It's not fruit that we have to somehow come up with in order to be good Christians, but it is quite literally the fruit of the Spirit in our life. So I'm going to read uh, the passage from which we get um, this list of the fruit of the Spirit from Galatians 5, 13 through 26. Here are these words, uh, and it's a little bit longer uh, text to kind of get some context of what uh, Paul is talking about here. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft. Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But... The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. So the fruit of the Spirit is um, set in this uh, text talking about living in and walking by the Spirit. And this kind of this conflict that happens between uh, the Spirit, and that's just our spirit, but it's the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God in our lives, and our own selfish and flesh desires. So it's not that it is something that we can desi desire that creates this fruit. I mean, it, it states clearly what um, left to our own devices that we would desire. Jealousy, discord, fits of rage, sexual immorality, impurity, even dissensions and, um, and hatred, idolatry. This is what our, our flesh would desire. And the acts of the Spirit or the fruits of the Spirit are contrary to that. They are in a conflict. And so that's why we cannot think that we can be the ones that produce this fruit. We cannot in and of ourselves produce love. We cannot produce this joy. We cannot produce this peace or this forbearance or this kindness or this goodness or this faithfulness or this gentleness or this self-control. We cannot produce it. So we should stop trying to produce it ourselves under our own strength in our own flesh. And so the fruit of the Spirit is not when we act well or not when we, under our own power, need to get our act together and love more or have more joy or obtain more peace or be more forbearing with each other or that we should be more kind. The fruit of the Spirit show up when the Spirit 
is in our lives, when we are healthy, because it is, a, it is a healthy tree that bears fruit. Then when the Spirit is making us healthy, when it is getting rid of the sickness of our fallenness, the sickness of our sin in our lives, that is when the fruit of the Spirit show up. So if you're not noticing these things happening in your life, it's not that we need to try harder. It's that we need to rely on the Spirit more. We need to walk in step with the Spirit. So we're going to start uh, this, um, this several-week series talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, this week is just going to be an introduction. Um, and really, we've already gone through the introduction. But maybe this week is one to prepare our hearts to be open to how the Spirit can and should be working in our lives. That how the Spirit can make us more healthy so that we do produce love and joy and peace and forbearance and kindness and goodness and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control. So why don't we pause? Why don't we pray through the scripture Pray that God would reveal to us how we need to walk in his spirit and what in our life can he make us more healthy in so that we would exhibit and bear this fruit that comes from the spirit. And now we need to pray for one another. We need to intercede on behalf of each other. This is an incredible privilege that we have to lift up our community, to lift up our neighbors, to lift up our co-workers and our family members. So maybe you uh, don't know who you should pray for. Uh, maybe uh, you don't know um, the needs of others. Well, you can go and uh, pause here and uh, go back to um, the email that Dr. Quantrum sent of our entire prayer list that we send out. There's all kinds of names on that list of those who are requesting prayer. You could simply pray for your family. You can pray for those who are living in your household. You could pray for your extended family. You could pray for those who are sick and in the hospital during this time that um, if being in the hospital wasn't already um, anxious enough, that being in the hospital and being sick during this time um, creates even more anxiety. And we can pray for our community as we discuss um, and look at what it means to um, open up um, and uh, be in community more, that uh, we pray for wisdom and guidance for our leaders. And continue to pray for the ministries of College Church as we continue to try to be faithful to be the church and call the church to be the church during this time that um, is unlike any time that you've ever been in. So let's intercede on behalf of those around us. Let's intercede on behalf of our community. And let's go to the creator of the universe, the creator of you and me, um, in prayer um, on each other's behalf. And I would like to close this um, evening um, in the way that we uh, close um, every uh, pray at home. And that is by uh, reciting the Lord's Prayer together. So if you would um, recite with me uh, the Lord's Prayer in closing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us tonight.